Shalom and blessings, warriors of Yahuwah and the truth. Um, today, I'm not going to be able to do as much videos as I normally do. I just um, I have a lot of schoolwork and it's very overwhelming. I have six chapters to read and I'm only like halfway through the first chapter. not Maybe not even halfway through. And then she gave us... One, two, three, four. Four videos to watch, which I already watched. And then she's got um, three different websites that we're supposed to read from and two that we're supposed to explore. And then we also have to do a PowerPoint presentation. And that I haven't even been able to start yet, and it's due Sunday evening. So I am kind of feeling overwhelmed lately with, with everything that's going on and all of this uh trouble that's ha started happening uh, with my stuff going on with family life and family issues. But um, I still praise Yahuwah and praise Yahuwah no matter what is happening in your lives and you can never go wrong. Um, I am going to be reading the next section in the Sefer that we are in Maccabeum Rishon, um, 1 Maccabees 3. This is a long chapter, but we will read all of chapter 3, and I may do a short video of the Magisterium today. Um, I just kind of want to get started on this PowerPoint if I can. It's just I don't really know all the information, so it's going to be a little bit hard for me to do it. And I'm supposed to get at least, I think it's two, I don't know if it's two or three resources for it. I, and it's insane that she thinks we can get all this done in a week. Because the chapters, each chapter is probably 20, 20 to 25 pages long, sometimes longer. And then I have to take notes on most of the chapter for me to even be able to retain the information. It's just, it's just a big, crazy mess right now. But I pray Yahuwah gets me through this. And I know he will. He always makes a way. Okay, so 1 Maccabees 3. Then his son Yehuda, called Maccabee, rose up in his stead, and all his brethren helped him. And so did all that, all they that held with his father, and they fought with cheerfulness the battle of Yasharal. So he got his people great honor, and put on a breastplate as a giant, and girt his warlike harness about him, and he made battles, prote protecting the hosts with his sword. In his acts he was like a lion, and like a lion's whelp roaring for his prey. For he pursued the wicked, and sought them out, and burnt up those that vexed his people. Wherefore the wicked shrunk for fear of him, and all the workers of iniquity were troubled because Yahusha. Here it says Yeshua, which says in the bottom, salvation. But I've always heard that with the Shua end it means, uh, may his name be blotted out. Because Yahusha prospered in his hand. He grieved also many kings and made Yehoshua Ye glad with his acts, and his memorial is blessed forever. Moreover, he went through the cities of Yehud, the land or region of Judea, destroying the wicked out of them and turning away wrath from Yasharal, so that he was renowned unto the utmost part of the earth, and he received unto him such as were ready to perish. Then Apollyonus gathered the other nations together and a great host out of Shamron to fight against Yasharal, which thing, when Yehuda perceived, he went forth to meet him, and so he smote him and, th and slew him. Many also fell down slain, but the, the rest fled. Wherefore Yehuda took their spoils and Apollyonus sword also, and therewith he, therewith he fought all his life long. Now when, when Saron, a prince of the army of Aram, heard, heard to say that Yehuda had gathered unto him a multitude and company of the faithful to go out with him to war, he said, I will get me a name and honor in the kingdom, so I will go fight with Yehuda and them that are with him who despise the king's commandments. So he made him ready to go up, and there went with him a mighty host of the wicked to help him, and to be avenged of the children of Yasharal. And when he came near to the going up of Bet-Koran, Yehuda went forth to meet him with a small company. 
who, when they saw the host coming to meet them, said unto Yehuda, How shall we be able, being so few, to fight against such, so great a multitude and so strong, seeing we are ready to faint with fasting all this day? Unto whom Yehuda answered, It is, so, is no hard matter for many to, to be shut up in the hands of a few. And with the Elohim of Shamaim, it is all one to deliver with a great multitude or a small company. For the victory of battle stands not in the multitude of a host, but strength comes from the Shamaim. They come against us in much pride and, and iniquity to destroy us and our women and children and to spoil us. But we fight for our lives and our Torah. Wherefore, Yahuwah himself will overthrow them before our face. And as for you, be ye not afraid of them. Now, as soon as he had left off speaking, he leapt suddenly upon them, and so Saron and his host was overthrown before him. And they pursued them from the going down of bet Koran unto the, unto the plain, where were slain about eight hundred men of them. And the remnant fled into the land of Palestine. Then began the fear of Yehuda and his brethren, and, and an exceeding great dread to fall upon the nations round about them. So much so as his fame came unto the king, and all the nation, nations talked of the battles of, battles of Yehuda. Now when King Antiochus heard these things, he was full of indignation, wherefore he sent and gathered together all the forces of his realm, even a very strong army. He opened also his treasure, and gave his soldiers pay for a year, commanding them to be ready whensoever he should need them. Nevertheless, when he saw that the money of his treasures failed, and that the tributes in the country were small, because of the dissension and plague which he had brought upon the land in taking away the Torah, which had been of the of old time, which should not wait, yeah, which had been of old time, he feared that he should not be able to bear the charges any longer, nor to have such gifts to give so liberally as he did before. For he had abounded above the kings that were before him. Wherefore, being greatly perplexed in his mind, he determined to go into Persia, there to take the tributes of the countries and to gather much money. So he left Lysias, a nobleman, and one of the blood royal, to oversee the affairs of the king from the river Parath unto the borders of Mitzrayim, and to bring up his son Antiochus until he came again. Moreover, he delivered unto him the half of his forces and the elephants, and gave him charge of all things that he would have done, as also concerning them that dwelt in Yehud and Jerusalem, to wit that he should send an army against them to destroy and root out the strength of Yasharal and the remnant of Jerusalem, and to take away their memorial from that place, and that he should place strangers in all their quarters and divide their land by lot. So the king took half of the forces that remained and departed from Antioch, his royal city. The hundred forty and seven, seven, and seven, and seventh year, so hundred and forty-seven years, and having passed the river Parath, he went through the high countries. Then Lysias chose Ptolemy, or Ptolemy, the son of Dorimenes. Nicanor and Gorgias, mighty men of the king's friends, and with them sent forth 40,000 40, footmen and 7,000 horsemen to go into the land of Yehud and to destroy it as the king commanded. So they went forth with all their power and came and pitched by Yamin in the plain country. And the merchants of the country, hearing the fame of them, took silver and gold very much with servants and came into the camp to buy the children of Yasharal for slaves. Um, sorry. Okay. A power also of, of Aram and of the land of Palestine joined themselves unto them. Now when Yehuda and his brethren saw these miseries were multiplied and that the forces did encamp themselves in their borders, for they knew how the king had given commandment to destroy the people and utterly abolish them, they said one to another, Let us restore the decayed fortune of our people, and let us fight for our people and the sanctuary. Then was the assembly gathered together that they might be ready for battle, and that they might pray and ask mercy and compassion. Now Jerusalem lay void as a wilderness. There was, was none of her children that went in or out. The sanctuary also was trodden down. 
and aliens kept the stronghold, the heathen had their habitation in that place, and joy was taken from Jacob, and the pipe with the harp ceased. Wherefore Yasharal assembled themselves together and came to Mitzpah, over against Jerusalem, for in Mitzpah was a place where they prayed aforetime in Yasharal. Then they fasted that day and put on sackcloth and cast ashes upon their heads and rent their clothes and laid open the sepher of the Torah, wherein the heathen had sought to paint the likeness of their images. They brought also the priest garments and the first fruits and the tithes and the Nazarene. They stirred up who had accomplished their days. They cried, then cried they with a loud voice toward Shamayim, saying, What shall we do with these, and whither shall we carry them away? For your sanctuary is trodden down, and profane, and your priests are in heaviness, and brought low. And lo, the heathen are assembled together against us to destroy us. What things they imagine against us, you know. How shall we be able to stand against them except you, O Allahim, be our help? He is that then sounded they with shofars, trumpets, and cried with a loud voice in it. After this, Yehuda ordained captains over the people, even captains over thousands and over hundreds and over fifties and over tens. But as for such as were building houses, or had betrothed women, or were planting vineyards, or were fear, fear or sorry or were fearful, those he commanded that they should return every man to his own house according to the Torah. So the camp removed and pitched upon the south side of Yamin. And Yehuda said, Arm yourselves and be valiant men, and see that ye be in readiness against the morning, that ye may fight with these nations that are assembled together against us to, to destroy us and our sanctuary. For it is better for us to die in battle than to behold the calamities of our people and our sanctuary. Nevertheless, as the will of Elohim is in Shamaim, so let him do. Okay, next time we'll be reading chapter 4. I love you all with an everlasting love. Shalom and blessings, warriors of Yahuwah and the truth. Torah, Rabba, Abba, Yahuwah. Torah, Rabba, Abba, Yahuwah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hurrah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hurrah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hurrah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Ruach HaKodesh. I love you all so much. Shalom and blessings, warriors of Yahuwah and the truth.